Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and we are moving on to AP Chemistry Unit 3, Section 12. In this section, we're learning about the nature of waves and how to make some calculations with those electromagnetic waves as well. So here, we have a picture of a wave. And we know that we can calculate the wavelength of the wave by literally taking the, the distance from one point on the wave and finding the distance to the exact same correlating point on the next wave. So in this case, I'm going from crest to crest, and that's the wavelength. Or you could go from trough to trough as well and get the exact same value for the wavelength. We usually measure uh, wavelength in meters, and the symbol for wavelength is this Greek letter lambda. Now, as we look at this wave right here, we can see that the wavelength is much shorter, isn't it? It has a much shorter wavelength. And as a result, it has, it has what we would say a higher frequency. Now, frequency refers to how many wave cycles hit a certain point per second. We have to remember that these waves are always in motion. So if you imagine a perhaps a line or a point here, and this wave is moving over the course of time, how many of these waves will pass that line over the course of a second. Well, that's the frequency. Now, the, uh, the symbol for frequency looks kind of like a letter V. That's actually the Greek letter nu, and that is our uh, symbol for frequency. Now, if we take a look at electromagnetic waves as opposed to like waves on the ocean or sound waves or something like that, we find that pretty much all electromagnetic waves move at the speed of light. And we can relate the relationship between uh, the wavelength and the frequency with this equation right here. C is the speed of light. C stands for celeritas, which in Latin means swiftness. Now, the speed of light is about 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That's 300 million meters per second. That is really fast. Now, like we said earlier, the lambda represents the wavelength, how long the wave is, literally. And that's measured in meters. We use m for meters. And then the nu there, that is the frequency. And that's how many wave cycles per second pass a point like I said, over the course of a second. And that's measured in hertz. Now, there are a couple different ways to express hertz. Uh, we can just write it as, you know, reciprocal seconds, s to the, to the negative one. You can write out the word hertz, or hz also works as a good value for that. Notice the relationship between wavelength and frequency. They're next to each other on that same side of the equal sign, which means that they are inversely proportional to each other. One goes up and the other goes down. So the higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. And the longer the wavelength, uh, the, the lower the frequency is going to be. Now let's take a couple examples here. Let's imagine that we have an FM radio station that broadcasts on a frequency of 96.9 megahertz. Determine the wavelength of the radio waves emitted by this station's antenna. So once again, we're using the equation C equals lambda times nu, and we're just going to plug and chug into this equation here. So C is our speed of light, so that's 300 million meters per second, 3.00 times 10 to the eighth. And then the wavelength over here, the lambda, that's what we're trying to solve for. It says determine the wavelength. So that's going to be our unknown. The frequency, the new here, is the 96.9 megahertz. But notice, we have to write it in hertz, not megahertz. So mega means a million, so it's 96,900,000 hertz. So when we plug these into our equation, we can solve and get the answer quite easily and find that the answer for the wavelength is about 3.09 meters. So that's how we can solve for that. That means that if you could somehow see the wave that was being emitted by that antenna, it would have a wavelength of just over three meters. Let's try another example. Let's say we have a red laser pointer that emits a light at a steady wavelength of 670 nanometers. What frequency is the light that's being emitted by this pointer? Well, it's the same type of problem. We're going to use C 
equals lambda nu, and we're going to plug into that equation. So c is the speed of light, which is, once again, 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. We know what the wavelength is this time, 670 nanometers. Now, we know that a nanometer is 10 to the negative ninth meters. So probably the easy way is just to write this as 670 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. Now you can put that into real scientific notation, but your calculator will do that for you either way. Now if the frequency, the new, that's what we're solving for. So we can plug that in as our unknown and just do a, sim a, a simple division, and you'll find that the answer is about 4.5 times 10 to the 14th hertz. So that is the frequency for this uh, this particular laser pointer. Now let's take this one step further. We've learned the, the uh, relationship uh, between the wavelength and the frequency, but what about something else? Let's take a look at the actual energy that's being packed in the photons of, these, of this light. Here is the relationship uh, between the energy of a photon and its frequency. It is directly proportional, and all you have to do is take the frequency of the light and multiply it by h. Now that is something that we call Planck's constant. The energy of a single photon in joules is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. Planck's constant is equal to about 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. That's a very small number, which means that every little tiny photon out there has a very small amount of energy. We're talking about a very small packet of energy. But once you have a lot of these, then you have, of course, a lot of energy. Of course, the nu represents the frequency, which is in wave cycles per second, or, or hertz, as we've talked about. Now, that means that if we know the frequency, we can figure out the energy of a photon. And likewise, if we know the energy of a photon, we can figure out the frequency as well. And you know what? If we know the frequency, we can uh, backtrack and even get the, uh, the actual wavelength for that too. So let's try this problem right here. If an AM radio station broadcasts on a frequency of 1,340 kilohertz, determine the energy contained per photon in its electromagnetic waves. So once again, we're going to use the equation E equals H times nu. So E is what we're solving for, since it says determine the energy. So we're going to solve for that. Now H is Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. And the nu, well that's the frequency, and that's 1,340 kilohertz. Now a kilohertz is 1,000 hertz. So this is basically, you know, 1,340 times 1,000 uh, hertz. If you want to calculate that, it's actually something like 1,340,000, or you can write it something like this if you prefer. All we have to do is multiply, as you can see, and when we do that, we find that the energy of a single photon is 8.88 times 10 to the negative 28th joules. So once again, that's a very small amount of energy, and that makes sense. You would expect one photon to have a very small amount of energy. If you did the answer or I did the problem and got some huge number here, you, you would know that you're doing something wrong. Let's try another example. During World War II, it was discovered that some pilots could detect infrared light. They found that infrared radiation at a wavelength of 1,160 nanometers was interpreted by the naked eye as a pale greenish light. Calculate the energy of a single photon of this light. Now notice that our equation, E equals h nu, will relate energy to the frequency. But we're not given the frequency. We're actually given the wavelength. So the first step we have to do here is figure out what the frequency is. We know the wavelength. We can use C equals lambda nu to determine the frequency. So we can plug and chug just like we did in that other equation. And C, of course, is the speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. The wavelength is 1,160 nanometers, which is 1,160 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. And we're trying to solve for the frequency. 
So we can divide that out and we find that the frequency is 2.59 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Well now, once we know the frequency, then we can plug into the other equation, E equals H times nu. We're trying to find the energy of the photon, so we're solving for E. H is Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. And our frequency, our nu, well, that's what we calculated in the first part of the problem, the 2.59 times 10 to the 14th hertz. So now all we have to do is multiply across, and we find that the energy of this photon is 1.71 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So this is a two-step problem, but if you're fairly adept at working with this algebra here, you shouldn't have any problem at all solving that. Let's try one more problem here. We're going to look at a photoelectron spectroscopy graph. Now, we did this earlier on in the course, way back in Unit 1, but this is a good review because we need to keep remembering how to do these problems. Let's label this PES diagram, and we're going to identify the element that we have here. Now, remember, if you can write an electron configuration, you can label a PES diagram. All we have to do is go from left to right. It goes 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s. And so those those peaks are labeled left to right just like you'd write an electron configuration in that very same order. And remember, the height of the peak uh, represents the relative number of electrons we have. Notice that all these S peaks have the same height. So that tells us that they all have two electrons in them. And the three, or these uh, two P peaks, the 2P and that 3P, they're three times higher which means they have three times as many electrons. So it's 2p6 and 3p6. And if you look at the electron configuration that we've basically just written here, we know that that is the configuration for calcium. It ends with 4s2. Now, let's take this one step further. Let's calculate the wavelength in meters of electromagnetic radiation that's needed to remove an electron from the valence shell of an atom of the element. How do we do that? Well, let's think about the valence shell. Which peak would that be? Well, that would be the very last peak in this case, the 4s peak. And notice that there is an energy associated with those electrons. 0.979 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. Well, if we know the energy in joules, then we can use an equation, E equals h nu, to calculate the frequency, can't we? And if we know the frequency, we can determine the wavelength as well. So let's use the equation E equals h nu to determine the frequency of this light. So we're just going to plug and chug. The E, the energy, is right there in the graph. It's 0.979 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. The h is our Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds, and we're trying to determine the frequency here. So we just use simple algebra and divide, and we find that the frequency of this light is 1.48 times 10 to the 15th hertz. Now if we know the frequency, we can determine the wavelength, can't we? We use speed of light, equals lambda times nu. So we just plug into that equation. So the speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. We're solving for the wavelength. And we just calculated the frequency as 1.48 times 10 to the 15th hertz. Do a simple division, and you'll find that the wavelength is 2.03 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Or, if you prefer, you can convert that to nanometers, and that's about 203 nanometers. And if we think about how that would plot on our electromagnetic spectrum, well, this is the visible light spectrum, and 203 nanometers is a little bit off of this. And so it's beyond violet, so I think it's safe to say that this frequency, or this, this light, would be in the ultraviolet range. So this is a nice application 
of a question that they might ask you on an exam, like an AP exam or some other type of exam, about wavelength and frequency and energy of a photon. I hope you enjoyed this video. hope you learned something from it. If you did, please smash that like button and share my videos with uh, somebody else in your AP Chemistry uh, class or a colleague of yours. Uh, I, I thank you for joining me. I'm Jeremy Krug. I hope to see you in my next video, which is going to get us started on Unit 3, Section 13 of AP Chemistry.